at CGTV. And more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ascot Racecourse. Once again, it is time for Historic Auctions. And today, we're taking a little look around at the preview ahead of the 21st of May auction, which is happening this weekend. I've come in my Range Rover, which is over here, and there's some really exciting bits. And once again, I'm going to be tempted to get my bidding hat on. So we're going to go inside. We're going to discuss some very important stuff very shortly. But first things first, it's chaos here at the moment. Everything is preparing. My Range Rover's here. So then my Range is here. Some of you will have seen the first drive video on my channel. And you may be forgiven for thinking, TG, this is looking rather spanky. This was from the help of Dropless. Dropless have been and washed this thing. It's all rather shiny. It's back to how it was. I've been using it solidly now for about a week plus, and it's absolutely mint. So shout out to Dropless. If you use the code TOMTG30, you'll get a 30% discount on your wash. But great, great stuff. But I'm loving it. No glitches. It hasn't been stolen. It hasn't broken down. Thanks for all the lovely comments about what you think might happen to this car. But it's been absolutely perfect so far. So long may that continue. And I really do appreciate the positivity from some of you saying to my brand new car that it's going to break down. It's really, really nice. So thank you for that. Uh, but anyway, you'd be pleased to see it's here in one piece. And it's chauffeured me here with a hot stone massage this morning with ease. Anyway, as exciting as my Range Rover is. Many of you are not as excited by it as I am. So as usual, there is lots of cool stuff here at Ascot Racecourse, such a cool venue. And you can come and check out the cars, all of them, there's loads inside. We're gonna go inside and have a little round. You can come and check out all the cars ahead of the auction this weekend. We've got a C63 Black Series here. And you'll see on all of the cars, when I'm looking round, you'll see a number on them. That one's actually upside down, but you'll see a number. So that's number 244. If you go on the Historic's website, you'll be able to put in the lot number and actually see all the details on each individual car. But this is a very rare car. It's got the aero package on it, not the kind of the more touring package on it. It's got carbon all the way around it, carbon mirrors, carbon splitter, all the rest of it. And it's unbelievable. Very rare car. So that is coming up for auction this weekend. Sun's come out. One thing I would say actually, it's got a lot of 80s and 90s legends. So we've actually got a Vauxhall GTE here. This, this may well be from before some of your times, but the GTE Astra was a legend in its day. Uh, and it's actually really cool to see one of these. It's actually been owned by an owner's club member. So very, very fresh right hand drive. Lovely stuff. What an absolute legend of a car. We've also got an XR2 here as well. Fiesta XR2 in looks literally completely standard, which is rare because most of these got absolutely trashed. That is very, very cool. Stay tuned to classic giveaways for something along this theme very soon. More on that another time. Another Ford there. Gold GTI 16 valve again. That is lot number 271. I'm not bore on too much. We've got a Golf Cab here. I think I recognise this car. It looks exactly the same. Absolute Minter. We've got a 456 there. Let's go inside anyway because it gets very spicy in here. I'm going to take you through my top picks and things that I may well be bidding on. So we've got here a 575M F1 gearbox, Coyo interior, I believe, Rosso Corsa. Lovely stuff. They are looking better by the day. I love those. And I love 550s. Now, I've just recorded a podcast with Vicky Butler Henderson and Mr. Matthew Pretty from here. And we were discussing this very car. We were discussing McLaren MP4 12 c We were discussing how uh, extrapolated the name was. But actually, what an amazing buy these things are now. A lot of people are scared of these because of a lot of the McLaren reputation, actually. Some of the cars they've built over the past sort of, uh, 10 years or so uh, just did suffer from some uh, Build quality related issues. However, these early cars, the 12 Cs, are known for being pretty solid. These and the 650S, I think, are in a different league to a lot of the stuff that McLaren built subsequently after those, uh, namely even the 570Ss, uh, the 540Cs. These cars are streets ahead, and this truly is hypercar performance. This car has covered 11,000 miles, and the estimate is around 80 grand. It's Harissa Red, full carbon pack inside, Meridian Audio. I think that is a hell of a car. Now with warranties being offered on these things and specialists working on them, I'm actually tempted by a 12C. I mean, it's full carbon in there, bucket seats, and the doors obviously are complete havoc. The guy that's owned this car has maintained it regardless of cost. And I think that is a very, very good looking, cool car. And actually, 
a piece of McLaren history. That is an unbelievable bit of kit. I may have a dabble. I may just buck the trend and buy another McLaren. So I do want your thoughts on 12Cs, what your experiences are. Please let me know in the comments. Another car right next to it, actually. We're going to get onto that Speciale. All right, everyone? So just hold your horses. We're going to get onto it. I've actually driven that car. The video's on YouTube already. We've got 612 Scagletti here. Not only is it a right-hand drive, not only is it in this lovely dark red, I believe that's Rosso Fiorano, potentially, but it is a gated manual gearbox, mated to, of course, uh, front-engined, naturally aspirated V12. I love that little plaque. Just so cool. When Ferrari were wiping the floor with everyone at Formula One, they just stuck plaques in all their cars to rub it in, which is great. Obviously, it's a Pininfarina design, and it's got four seats as well. The 612 went down to about 40 odd grand. You've actually got relatively decent sized seats in the back. I mean, that front seat is all the way back, but actually you could fit a normal human in the back there. Really, really cool. Again, I do fancy a little dabble on this. I think this car's done 24,000 miles, thereabouts. Very, very cool. And that's not many miles at all for one of these. And you can tell someone very civilized has owned this car because of the spec, because scumbags don't buy specs like this. Uh, it's got full, full service history. I was actually reading into this car earlier. That is a very good shout. And I think the estimate on this starts at around 90 grand, which is a hell of a car for that. I think from the front, this car is extraordinarily pretty. It's not overdone spec-wise either. It's, it's a proper Tourer. I think that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love that. Really, really cool car. Anyway, we've got Speciali here. This car I have driven already on the Historics channel, so I'm not going to bang on about it. Speciali, I think, needs to hit my garage at some point. Obviously, as a former 488 Pista owner and also as a former 458 Spider owner, this was really interesting to drive. It did not disappoint. But again, go and watch that video right now over on the Historics YouTube channel because myself and Matthew Pretty, who most of you will know by now, went out in this very car. It's actually got a really interesting personalization plaque inside it as well, but... Iconic spec, blue nart stripe, Rosso Corsa, wonderful. And I do believe these will be half a million quid in the not too distant future. I think with all the wobble that's going on with the car market at the moment, A, I don't think there's gonna be that much of a wobble, and B, I do think this end of the market here will pick up because this is a surefire bet to be sought after for decades to come. Love these. And as I said at the start, all the lot numbers are there. And if you go on the historic site, um, you just plumb in the lot number and it will actually bring each car's details up. But out of these three, do let me know what you bid on. Three very different cars, but absolute screamers in their own right. What I love about Historics is there's always a mix. You've got Caterham there, and you've also got, um, I think this is, well, I'd actually be tempted to buy this for Archie, to be fair. I think this is a noddy car, uh, and I think Archie would look right at home in there. Go and pester him on Instagram and tell him that he needs this car. <laughs> I can imagine him in there. Absolutely brilliant. I don't know what the estimate is. I actually genuinely didn't even know this was here. But that's complete chaos. Very good. There is actually something else I want to show you that I think would suit Archie as well. Let's, let's go find it. So coming through then, this is the bidding room. And as I say, you can come and check out all these lots in the metal ahead of the auction. And this is where the live auction is going to be on the 21st this weekend. Obviously, you can bid online as well. And they've got a lovely new video wall up there as well. Lovely stuff, which my camera's making a meal of. But yes, you can bid online, and that's what I'll be doing because I'll be at the Formula One this weekend. So I'll be bidding online, and these will be the live bidders in the room as well. This then is what I was initially thinking for Archie. I do a full walk around of this car over on the Historics YouTube channel, all very professionally filmed. This is just a very rough run around uh, of here. But this is a BMW Isetta. And it's actually been designed with one seat in there and a little loading pickup side on that side. And you will also put a load of stuff in the back. I think either for Archie just to kind of rattle around in or myself and Crisps to drive around in and go and get snacks. I think this is absolute chaos. It's been subjected to a full nut and bolt restoration. And I don't know, but I think this might be classified as a quadricycle, so therefore congestion charge exempt. I don't know. I may well have just made that up, but that is really, really cool. And the previous owner has literally gone nut and bolt on that. Complete mayhem. It reminds me of a PLP 50. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. We have got all sorts here. I'm not gonna point everything out because we'll be here all day. There's 200 cars here at historics i just love coming in just because you never know what you're going to see i love pagodas by the way one's going to have to happen at some point we've got all sorts absolutely all sorts i oh, love an e-type absolutely love an e-type that's stunning in that color 
I mean, call me a moron, but I don't even know what that is. Evante. Sorry, everyone. I'm being an ignorant pig now. I don't know what that is. But that's cool. Never seen one of those before. Coming through there, we've got a 911 beeline. A lovely 2.4 911T. Yes, it is. Lovely 2.4. Right hand drive, 911T. Lovely interior in there. That is lot number 211. Very nice car, that. No more 911s, though, for me. For now. Three door Bentley. I think that's an Arnage. Is it an Arnage? Continental. That's brilliant, though. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, right. Continental T. There we go. Nearly there. Wow, these 6.75 litres, something like that. Dark red interior, and that is brilliant. I don't quite have the balls for that, nor do I have the balls for this, but that is unbelievable. Imagine honking down to the south of France in that Bentley Azure, ladies and gentlemen. Unreal. And for your passengers in the back, when they're getting windswept, got TVs in the back as well. Ridiculous. Walnut everywhere. Maybe it's not walnut, it's probably some sort of fancy wood other than walnut. Coming through, a couple of Jags. We've also got this 911T, I believe, as well. This looks like full nut and bolt. Yeah, it is a 911T. Wow. Lovely stuff. That looks like the modern uh, Viper Green that's offered on the new 911s. Really cool. Left hand drive. What lot number is that? Saving you some time here, giving you the lot numbers. 167. Do you fancy having a look at that? What else have we got? TVR over there. Loads of Jags. Loads of Jags here. If you're a Jag person, got a Mustang. Don't get the whole Mustang thing. They are cool, but I don't get it. Call me a pig. No idea. What I also like about Historics a lot of the time is you get a lot of dictator spec cars, which I really enjoy. So this is a V12 S600, I think. Complete carnage with the lovely split wheels there. And that's a right-hand drive car as well. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I do want another Aston, and I was looking at a DBS. Um, but there is content out there on other channels with that uh, DBS of kind of the latter shape of this. So I have been mooting a Vanquish. This is a Vanquish S. And I do think these have aged unbelievably well. It's a sport shift from what I can see. But that is stunning. I love the shape on these. And these are really, really sensible money. That is a beautiful Aston Martin. And I think an era of Aston Martin that is arguably now gone. Do like those, Daimler. Now this, over here, it's not only a Porsche, but this actually featured on the Historic channel. I've actually been out in this car with Matthew Pretty as well, with the Speciale in the same video. So make sure you hit the Historic's YouTube channel to go and see the full spec on this car, hear this thing and see this thing in action and get all our thoughts on it because it's not just any old 911. I'll give you a little teaser inside. But you've got to go watch that video. So even if you click off this one, go and watch it. Make sure you do that. Aston Vantage. Love these shapes. There's just so many things I'd love to have in my garage, but I'm not quite there yet, pay grade-wise. This is a car that I'm going to be talking about on the Historics channel very shortly. That video is probably already live, if not live, uh, a day or so later. A G-Wagon cab. It is a left-hand drive. I don't think these even ever got made in right-hand drive, but convertible G-Wagon is probably the most chaotic thing you could have for London. It's absolutely brilliant. Obviously, this was a bit of a precursor to the Laundelay thing um, that DJ Khaled honks around Miami in, so this is mental. It's got Brabus badging on it as well. It's got a side X exhaust, Brabus wheels. Unreal. And it is, is an automatic as well. Really, really cool. I don't actually know the full details on this, but I might have a little flutter on this as well, because I don't know what this will go for, but I might have a little go. That is mega. I love that. So pointless, but also so brilliant. That with the roof off in the summer, great. Again, something a little bit quirky. Lot number 217 is this 1966 Pontiac GTO Monkey Mobile. Now, the Monkeys, for those younger viewers out there, one of the most successful bands of the 1960s. They sold 75 million records or thereabouts. And this particular car was created in New York from a 1966 Pontiac GTO by James Benkin, a specialist from East Coast Film Custom Car Shop. It was then shipped to the UK just in time for the Monkeys' 45th anniversary tour in 2011. Now, a car like this just recently sold in worse condition for a quarter of a million dollars. It's fully road legal. It's got an MOT until May 2023 and it is offered at this weekend's 
auction is complete chaos. Look at this thing. It's an incredibly rare car. There's photos of the band with this car and they had an incredible time apparently touring the UK in this car. It's a very well known car on the celebrity car scene. As I say, it is available. So if any of my followers bid on this, I want to see you doing Sloan Street in this car, please. And if you're a fan of the monkeys as well, there's also a guitar, an original guitar, played by one of the band members, I don't know that much about the monkeys, available, fully signed in the auction too. That is a unique piece of history. It comes with a case as well, and that is estimated to be worth around 20,000 pounds. So if you're a monkeys fan, this auction is for you. Whilst I'm strolling then, I do want to say I'm going to be in Stamford on the 12th of June with Charles and Dean, organized on the Roadster app. I'm going to be there, it's going to be a meet and greet. You have to go and get the Roadster app and sign up on there. I say sign up, but it's literally just confirm your attendance on there. There is a link you need to click, uh, but make sure you go and get the Roadster app, type in TGTV, I will come up, and all my events, all my meets will be listed on there. I I've got about 11,000 followers on the app already, so most of you know, but for those that don't, go and sign up, and I'll see you in Stamford on the 12th of June. We're heading out now, though. I'm in the way, about to get run over by Dom. Suits you, sir. In he goes. Ford Capri, lovely stuff. Instantly drawn to a 996. The C4S wheels on it, or they might be the turbo wheels. I can't tell. Oh no. Oh dear. Yes, 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 yes. This is fate. I was actually talking to someone the other day about 968 Club Sports at a house party I was at, and he said he's got one, and I said I need to get one, and he said yes, you do need to get one, and here one is. This is regarded then by many Porsche aficionados as one of the best driving and best handling Porsches of all time. And I think it would be only be right if I added one of these to my collection at some point. I just think they're so cool. And look at those retro bucket seats in there. Can you see them? The plastic backed bucket seats with 968 CS. You've obviously got a roll cage in there. I do need to look at the full details. I actually didn't know this was here. So I'm going to have a little look at that. See what the score is. Lot number 168, so obviously with classic giveaways we gave away a 968 convertible, which wasn't the most uh, thrilling drive, but these apparently are meant to be insane news. And I think the estimate on this should be 30 odd grand maybe, as a guess, which isn't a lot of money for chaotic Porsche ownership. We've also got, speaking of chaotic Porsches, we've also got a 356 here as well. This is basically uh, what my 912 is, but my 912 is essentially just this uh, with a 911 shell on it. Just a slightly revised front. It's exactly the same silhouette, give or take. Slightly less of a bump at the back, uh, but this is effectively the same as my 912. I would love a 356, but owning a 912, I don't think there's any need for it, but uh, they are cool. Arguably it's cooler than the 912, dare I say it. Don't know what the estimate is on this one, but that is lot number 251. Really, really cool. Let's come around there and look at some other lots here. We've got an M5, SL, these are looking better by the day. Another big boy S-Class. An old SEC, I think. I'm really testing my impromptu knowledge here. Another Jag, no, that's a Daimler. Don't tell me off. We've got a Morris Cowley. Morris Cowley, ladies and gentlemen. It's all going off here. This shape Range Rover is probably the richest thing ever. I'm sorry, but this shape Range Rover is looking richer and richer by the day. The Queen honks around in one of these. And I don't think there's any better testament to Range Rover than the Queen not even driving the new shape, but still having her old one, this shape. There's footage of her recently at a Windsor Horse Show, I think, arriving in one of them. Brilliant. All right, loads of stuff here. You're all gonna know better than me a lot of the time what you're looking at, so just take it all in on my blurry, shaky stroll around here. Mitsubishi. An EOS there, a VW EOS. Chaos, fear. <laughs> if anyone wants a limo, a Fleetwood limo, there's one there. Cadillac, Fleetwood, <laughs> that's complete mayhem. You wanna look like a 60s president, there we go. We've got all sorts an old Lotus Esprit. And actually, this is quite interesting because famous designer, I'm not gonna try and pronounce it, Gigaro. However, I've actually got a Seiko made by this chap. Seiko Gigaro, you can actually pick them up relatively cheaply. Very famous car designer, and it's actually one of his most famous designs. Quite a cool piece of history, that. Another big boy Bentley, historic truck. Down here, we've got some Defenders, and back to where we started with my Range Rover over there. I think then that is all that we've got time for. Huge thank you for watching. Huge thank you to Historics for having me along. 
once again to check out all the cars coming up in this weekend's auctions. I will leave all the details below how to bid, how to come and see these cars because they're physically available to come and prod, come and see, ask questions about, go through the history file, go through all the accessories, your car covers, your warranty booklets, all of that kind of stuff. It's all here and they've got it all documented. So if you've got any questions about anything, pick up the phone, come in, do whatever you need to do, but check the cars out before you bid because you can do that here and they're really, really good at that. So keep me posted and many of you do what you bid on, what you win. At some point I may even have a get together of people that have bought cars from one of these auctions because they're such an eclectic mix. Also make sure you subscribe to the Historics YouTube channel. Go and say hello to me in the comments there. Make sure you're following them on Instagram because you'll see all the lots coming in ahead of the auctions and you may well miss stuff. I didn't even know that 968 Club Sport was coming in. Uh, so yeah, there's so many cars you need to keep your finger on the pulse because otherwise you'll miss stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and stay tuned to see what, if anything, I win coming up this weekend. Cheers guys, bye.